Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your time. When we select which airlines we wanted to travel from Vietnam to here to join the competitions, our coach, Dr. Majo, told us that we should choose Cathay Pacific. At first, three of us thought that it was a budget airline, but then our leader clarified that it's a premium brand. So, as you can see, this little story can show that there's a misperception. There are many people out there haven't got been clarified about the positions of Cathay Pacific. Hello, my name is Sally, and this is Rahu, this is Kai, and this is my leader, Kate. And we are from RMIT University of Vietnam. So to start off, I would like to just quickly outline what we will be presenting today. So to start, we will do the analysis for the case and to see what the market is, and both in terms of competitors and in terms of the general market. Secondly, we will go into what the measures that Cathay has already taken so Cathay has taken multiple measures to fix their issues and to try to be a leaner company. And then we will evaluate the current strategy to see what is missing from it. And we hopefully can propose a better strategy to improve and to add on to what they have already proposed. And finally, we will do a risk analysis uh, and cost within the strategies that we propose. And to end, we will conclude with a timeline to show you the implementation of our strategy. To start off, I would like to invite Kate to uh, go through the market analysis. So firstly, in terms of the Asian market, in terms of the current situations, they make up one third of the world's airline passengers at 1,214 million. And in terms of demographics, uh, with the rising income, there's an increasing demand for air travel. And in terms of the future prospects, demand is expected to go up annually by 5.7% with 40 with uh, making up 40% of the total passengers in the world um, by 20, 2037. So overall, we can see that there's a huge potential in the Asian market for air travel. So to elaborate on that, uh, the, the potential is, has been identified, and this has been um, saturated with small budget airlines, which pack out a lot of people and is able to do a larger turnover compared to the traditional and more premium lines. So we see that there's a lot of, uh, the market size is quite large, but it is also saturated at the same time when it comes to budget flights. When we talk about Cathay Pacific, uh, Pacific specifically, we see that they have three lines, uh, three services. They provide uh, passengers, they provide cargo, and they provide um, catering services. So you can see that from the, the analysis, um, both catering and the cargo service has not come into a lot of shortfall, but where they are severely uh, occurring losses is in the premium, uh, in the passenger line. So we will try to tackle mostly on the passenger side. Secondly, they have a load factor of 84.5%. Um, when you compare it to other com uh, companies like Qantas and Southwest, we can see that they have similar load uh, factors. Load factor is how efficiently you fly your flights and the number of passengers you have per the, um, the distance they travel. So the load factor is quite high compared to Southwest and Qantas, it's much higher. But where we see they have a big problem is that their break-even load factor is 124, which is above 100%. Where if you compare Southwest, which is more uh, cheaper, we see that they have a 75.3%. So they're still making a profit. And when we look at Qantas, it is still close and very manageable. Mm -hmm. And Qantas has additional services to cover the losses. So 83 is also very, uh, close to their 80.1% load factor. So we can see that this is a key issue of their um, variable cost and their fixed cost. Secondly, they're making losses. In 2016, they made a loss of 575,000 uh, million uh, Hong Kong dollars. So this is an alarming figure and they've never made two consecutive years of losses. So this is why they've taken up, uh, ed, uh, taken up uh, measures to ensure that they do not occur losses consecutively. So now we will move on to um, why they cannot transition into the crowded area of budget because it's very crowded in terms of the number of competitors and in terms of uh, airport capacity as well. So they can't shift towards the budget side or to the more cheaper airline side. Their um, cheapest flight is $518 compared to Qantas which has 5000 which is their cheapest airline, do uh, airline fee. So they have the reputation and the brand image of a premium flight, whereas, like we mentioned before in our introduction, Cathay Pacific cannot attain that or is not translating this to their customer base. So for both sides, they are boxed in into the middle where they are not either affordable or luxurious. 
So we will tackle this throughout our case. For our second point, we would like to look at what they did for their current strategy. So in light of what my colleague has mentioned, in terms of the cost issues faced by your company, your companies have taken the uh, aforementioned key actions. Firstly, in terms of employee protection, <coughs> uh, you've reduced your management employees by 25% and non-management by 18%. And in terms of valuation, this is a very necessary because this increases your profit per passenger. So currently, the average in the, in the industry is around seven, but your company is only at one per uh, one dollar per passenger and it's declining so in theory this strategy should increase that secondly in terms of um, the net Secondly, in terms of route, you've, cut, you've reduced the routes available, you've also introduced new routes, and you've also increased the frequency of popular routes. So by doing this, this puts focus on your most profitable uh, aspects of your company, and that's why we believe that this strategy is very effective in limiting uh, wasteful resources. And lastly, in terms of capacity, you've increased the capacity in terms of seats of your planes, from 9 per row to 10 per row, and you've also increased the, um, you've reduced the airplane size but ca kept the number of seats the same and as a result this has increased efficiency and all of this comes um, with the aim of cost cutting however when these um, when these issues when these recommendations are implemented a lot of issues arise firstly in terms of employee the service quality is reduced and capacity this dilutes your image of being a premium brand so these issues arise, and now we're going to go into how to tackle them. So to summarize, uh, there are three key issues currently with your company. Firstly, differentiation in terms of operation. Initially, um, so we suggest dif um, differentiation in terms of your operation. Because you're a premium brand, however, your image is very diluted uh, by, by your offers. And secondly, Secondly, in terms of positioning. So initially, uh, you started out as a premium brand. However, due to competition from low-cost carriers, as my colleague has mentioned, you increased capacity, you in introduced low fares, and you've also um, uh, created the new line of Cathay Air. However, this made your positioning very unclear to your customers, and they're unsure of what <coughs> your position is in the market. And lastly, in terms of services. So, there's a very low morale in terms of human resources and this leads to issues regarding productivity and service quality and as a result, uh, because of the nature of your industry, the quality of service really translates into the customer and they're very in tune to the attitude of your employees and as a result, their customer loyalty is decreasing. So as Kate has just mentioned about how the implementation of a lean structure has can both benefit the company and hinder the company in certain senses in terms of how their uh, employees are, unsat uh, are worried about their jobs and unsatisfied with the co reduction of benefits. We see that we can there is room for improvement and we suggest a DSP strategy. So the DSP strategy stands for differentiation of your um, product compared to other competitors. S is to focus on services that you can tackle with very little cost and also provide you a differentiating factor. And finally, to clarify your position, to clarify what you are, what your brand is, and what it stands for. So that is why we're suggesting a DSP strategy. For the next half, my um, colleagues Kelly, uh, Sally and Kate, uh, Kai will come up and pitch our strategies. So for the first strategy, uh, thank you Rahul. For the first strategy about differentiations, we're going to come up to develop the operation and services of the products. So what we think of is the business now, they don't have much differentiation compared to all the airlines. That's why we suggest the company to have another strategy to partnership with one of the luxury transportation services and the hotels to, uh, in, um, to provide them with a B2B packages of easily bookings for the flights or hotels, the transport and the guidance. So the model, the business model is like they can, um, they can communicate with all the B2B uh, with other businesses and then they can provide a uh, trip, a business trip for these people and it's all included in one packages. So that package is going to provide the transportation from the hotels to the airports and then to the airport to their homes for the business people who want to travel. So this is going to be uh, the, the main target is going to be the businessmen and businesswomen and uh, for the corporation so that we can increase uh, the group of customers that we are trying to target in of the business class. And the cost for this 
So the cost for this is primarily on infrastructure, marketing and partnerships and building partnerships. And we want to eventually hit all 54 countries that we operate in, but we start with an initial budget of $10 million uh, to ensure that we get the key cities, the big cities, to ensure that this strategy works. Now, what the strategy primarily does in terms of um, our scale is both it differentiates us and it also provides an opportunity to position ourselves from our competitors. And uh, we're going to start with the first 10 city, big cities, including Hong Kong, Singapore, Ho Chi Minh City, Kuala Lumpur, and uh, Shanghai, Beijing, and many, uh, many, the many major cities in different uh, Southeast Asia countries and Asian countries. And uh, for this, as I have mentioned before, the main target is going to be the businessmen. And as we are trying to target the businessmen, one of the greatest ways is to target the corporation that's going to put them. Because uh, we believe one of the biggest insights is that most of, most of the people choose the business, uh, business class, uh, partly thanks to the corporation who's going to fund their trips. So that's why we're going to touch this part so that it's going to be easier for us to touch the businessman experience. However, this strategy may pose some risk, for example, <coughs> operational risk, as we are acquiring a lot of human capital um, it, with the part, through the partnership. We can may face uh, conflicts of communications. However, we can tackle this through many tools and sharing our visions and missions. And furthermore, uh, our partners may face, face the risk of their service quality. However, we can do this through PC and establishing a very, uh, very strong standards of the service that, that we expect from our partners. And moving on to the S part in DSP, S stands for service. And service comes from the stakeholders and provide to the stakeholders. So the three stakeholders we are targeting today is workers, our, our employees, uh, customers, our customers, and the society. So first of all, we believe that in order to provide a very, uh, a very good quality, we should tackle the employee's attitude. Through, uh, for example, we can promote them to uh, have to deliver better um, positive attitudes through bonus based on in-flight review. Imagine you bought a Cathay Pacific airplane, and then after that, you can receive you can receive a, a quick review, and you can vote for the crew on the flight how how well have they served you, and then uh, in, and then the employees, the flight attendants, and the crew can and can base on that to vote uh, to receive the bonus. This act is a motivation for them to prioritize the quality of the service. And also, we, at the same time, we, uh, we can establish a policy, a guideline, come along with training to ensure this. Secondly, we believe that as we encourage our employees to focus on the quality of their service, we can provide more values to our customer uh, through a uh, very strict QC, and at the same time, we can give them the feeling of being heard through a feedback system. And finally, to society, we believe that in order to contribute to a sustainable growth of a company, we can do many uh, sponsoring uh, flights through competitions or social events. For example, in my country, Vietnam Airlines has long been very famous for sponsoring flights for a very famous entrepreneurial co competitions called Vid Challenge. So what this allows, uh, to just elaborate on the sponsorship, what this allows is that we, even though it is a minimized cost, it still allows our brand image to be associated with business-oriented uh, competitions and business-oriented social work for the youth. So this allows us to simply market our tool, but through uh, social marketing. However, the service strategy, as I have mentioned, can have two risks. First of all, it's the bias review. Therefore, I, I suggest that you can implement the 360 degree evaluations through peer reviewing so you can have a most accurate assessment of your employees. And secondly, operational risk as in, even though at the same time, uh, we encourage you to prioritize safety and punctuality, but however, due to some incidents that you could not prevent, we believe that you can pro provide a proactive reactions through a uh, compensations package, a better one for your customer, and also on, on on time management management control due to many incidents. So uh, about the third rec uh, about positionings, we uh, suggest the company to have a long term uh, marketing strategy for all of the things that we have been mentioned before. Because one of the biggest key issue that has been laying in the case is that we don't have the differentiations. 
And now that we have the differentiation, we have to know how to position them, how to put them in the market. And one of the ways that we can do it is through branding communication campaigns. And uh, this is very basic communica uh, communication campaigns. We're going to do it through billboards, uh, through promotional materials, through TVCs. And on these things, uh, on the campaigns, the big idea is that we're going to focus on the business image of the companies in terms of this is a very safe, a very care, the, the, um, a very safe and a very high quality services and also it cares a lot about the customers so that we can touch the business men, which is uh, the main target of us, uh, to touch more of the business class people. And for this, we believe that the locations we're going to first do is in the big uh, 15 cities and uh, we're going to imply on of the, pro uh, for example, we're going to put the billboards in the big city like Ho Chi Minh City in the crowded areas or um, in uh, Shanghai and Beijing. And also we're going to put the other materi promotion materials like booklets, brochures on the airplane on board so that they can read about the airline when they are uh, on the flight. And lastly, we're going to put the TVC throughout the internet to touch more of the customer. So this will allow us to uh, estimate. So this will allow us both to work with the first strategy of our differentiated position, which is the business bundle. So this will allow us to also push that line and to ensure that people enjoy the services and purchase into the services. Now we've estimated a cost of six hundred uh, thousand six hundred thousand U.S. dollars per city for all the promotion and all the campaigning. And um, the target, uh, the target group, the target audience for this campaign is the public information, because we know that uh, all of the marketing campaign has to touch a specific group of customers. But this is also a way for us to raise the awareness of the brands and raising the branding, uh, the brand image among the people. So that's why we're gonna touch a large part of the pu public, so that we can increase our brand image, because this is damaging through uh, many, many of the previous uh, events that we have been doing that was mentioned in the case. And then uh, another big part that we're going to target is again the business man and the business woman. For the timeline, uh, we're going to apply uh, first about the differentiation, uh, differentiation uh, strategy. We're going to apply it in 2018. We believe that it will take half of the year to finish the process on a process of communicating and partnering with the shuttle. And then we're going to launch in 2018 with that shuttle services first. And then later on, it takes another half of the year to communicate with many of the hotels in the cities to launch that and uh, later on the year in 2018 uh, we're gonna launch the services of hotels and shuttle at the same times in uh, th those cities and uh, throughout on the times we're gonna improve the services and then we're gonna increase the, the location that we're gonna put it on and then for the services we're gonna launch the services in like uh, for the services part of like giving the review for the customers and giving the motivation for the crews we're gonna launch it in later of the year 2017 and after that, we just keep increasing it in the different cities and improving the services that we're going to have. And uh, lastly, about the positions, we can only do the position after all of our services of differentiation has been mentioned, uh, have been launched. That's why we believe that it takes half of a year from 2018 uh, since it's first applied to, um, it takes half of a year to planning and then we're going to launch it in later of 2018. And after that, we're going to be promoting it for like uh, one year and a half into imply on of the on of the city that we can and we got it's gonna be ends in 2020. So thank you Kai. Uh, through our DSP uh, through our DSP strategy we aim to have the following effects. Firstly, um, via differentiation we hope your company to have increased revenue from services and provide a clear differentiation proposition to your consumers. Secondly, via services, we hope to increase employee satisfaction as well as providing more motivation for better services from your employees. And lastly, via positioning, it gives a very, it enhances the brand image as well as increased public awareness. So in conclusion, we believe that by having a very clear differentiation, by improving your service, and by having a very clear position in the market, you will raw on the sky of the world. Thank you very much for listening. University. Now we'll go to the Q&A session. Judges, please ask your question. Thank you. Um, yeah, my first question is, um, your focus, I mean, in terms of the drop in the revenue, um, the focus of this uh, presentation is primarily therefore on the passenger revenue. Um, so where are we actually losing uh, most of our passenger revenue? Is that uh, in what particular segment, given your focus on business management? 
So in, in terms of, can I clarify your question? Yeah, so where are we actually losing uh, most of our passenger revenue? In what segment? Okay, uh, in terms of segment in the market? In terms of segment of our, our, our customers. Customer oh, and our customers. So, so we, uh, as we have already mentioned in our analysis, one of the biggest part that we are losing is on business class uh, because there is uh, one specific line saying that uh, the group of business class we are targeting is losings and uh, we are trying because we are at first a premium airline and now uh, because we want to get more sales so we reduce the price and as a result it, we lose the differentiation and then we just lose the business class like the, um, the the part of the business class in the um, in that going to our airplane. So we believe that one of the big uh, losing in the revenue is from the business class because there are a lot of things that are reducing the, the way. And, and to add on to that, uh, and we cannot target the economy class or the budget class because it's already extremely saturated with more cost uh, cost efficient competitors. Yeah. So we cannot go down to that segment. Yeah. So our best option is to go up to the um, focus on the business class. Yeah. Right. 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 So that, that means that in terms of the low cost carrier, it's basically, it's, it's a lost market. Kind of like in terms of, there's no necessarily some uh, defense. Exactly. Uh, uh, so Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question. And uh, that's the point that is resonant is that if we attack the low cost market with our uh, uh, Cathay Pacific line, we cannot hit that market. Our opportunity lies more maybe with the Dragon line. So we can uh, try with the Dragon line. But with the Cathay Pacific line, um, that market is very saturated and they've been um, dominant in terms of providing services for additional costs. And they, the model is much more structured to suit them compared to us. And uh, I believe that for the Dragon Airlines that targeting the uh, LLCs, the low cost carrier, um, this has already been uh, providing many kind of different strategy to imply on that. So that's why we're mentioning mainly on the Cathay Airlines. Well, I have many more questions on that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> please go. Ahead. In your new strategy for D, S, and P, I see that you're spending efforts in all three categories, but then it seems like on your timeline, uh, if it's been made for positioning and it comes in later, then differentiation is surface. Uh, why is that? You know, um, you know, why is that? You know, um, why do you think you know, it has to come in later? Uh, so our strategy, the DSP, the P stands for clarifying the position. To clarify what the position is. So we want to really lay out our differentiation and to really lay out our services and then um, translate that message to the customers later. So that is why in the, uh, but the two first two strategies are positioning us where we need to be, but the third strategy is to really clarify to the customers that we are positioning. So the two first recommendation that's got to be implied, implied very quickly and imply first is to resolve the problems that we are having that we don't uh, in a company <coughs> that we don't have a clear differentiation of who we are. And after we after do those two strategies, we're gonna have a clear position uh, differentiation of who we are, which is position um, to the market. We show there is that image of who we are in the market. So that's why it's gonna be implied later. We have to have it first. Um, for your DSP strategy, uh, I have a question on differentiation. Uh, why do you think partnering with other hotels is a good differentiation strategy for Cathay Pacific versus other airlines? How how would, how would this differentiate Cathay? versus other premium airlines who could actually replicate this strategy easily. Okay. Um, so can I clarify it? Yeah. So like uh, how can we target uh, right customer segment uh, with that uh, uh, increasing in the services, right? Yeah, so uh, we believe that uh, because our, we are trying, as I have mentioned before, we are trying to touch the part of the customer who is in business class. That's why we think like uh, providing uh, throughout with the uh, business people who is mainly the who is the main customer for the business class gonna have because it's touch firstly it's give the uh, for the corporation they're gonna have more benefit because it's very very easy uh, it's a whole package and it's very well served so it's just gonna have to buy the package and everything is already done they don't have to put more other services so that's from the uh, corporation side and then from our side it's gonna improve the services um, it's gonna like touch that part of the customer so, so to really clarify like Currently we have a very um, high cost and we're trying to find other alternative ways to promote first our flight, our services, and also additional revenue streams. 
So what we do with the packaging is allows us to uh, get a small commission in terms of both the transportation and the hotel. And we manage this through our uh, flights as well. So this is a cost effective way to expand our revenue stream as well as to ensure that we get more flight uh, purchases. Can I just ask additional questions on this? For your target customers, right? What do you think are the priorities of your target customers? The okay. priorities of your target customers in choosing campaigns. Like I believe that the target customer we are targeting now are the businessmen and businesswomen. They would care a lot about the comfort, about the safety, and the quality of the service. And also it's about the convenience, uh, whether it's on time or not, whether they have to do a lot of things to get from this thing, uh, this part to another part or not. So our key, tackle, uh, key thing that we want to tackle is convenience for them. And convenience, as um, I, I bet all of you know, is very important when you travel a lot. And the convenience of the experience without thinking about, oh, I need to get that ticket, I need to yeah. ensure that everything is ordered. And so we ensure that they don't have any of these worries and provide them to and from uh, very clearly through our yeah. and yeah and we also believe that they are also the people who cares about about the value that we see from their purchase so we so that's why we're improving their service and the differentiation to make sure that every values that we give are worth their their money yeah so in terms of again you know, like on, on the differentiation bit you know like I mean Qantas for example you know like why wouldn't they the moment you start putting it out there in your in your positioning why wouldn't Qantas do exactly the same thing well, how is that actually going to give you a lasting type of differentiation? So the differentiation you're referring to here is on... So it's basically the end-to-end no, it's basically the end -to -end surfacing, right? Mm -hmm. Is that comfort basically from, from uh, uh, you know, like you leave your home, you're getting picked up, you know, you go to... The, oh, oh, it's, 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 it's a full journey, right, that's yep. being taken care of. Exactly. I mean, why doesn't Qantas do that as well? And the moment you start putting it out there, they can copy it. So how is that going to give you a lasting differentiation in revenue stream? So in terms of differentiation, we're not just doing the full, full package only, but we're shifting towards we're in uh, we're shifting our we're increasing another focus on B two B rather than B two C. And by doing um, businesses uh, by doing a B two B model, that what that does it, it stabilizes uh, revenue in the long term. It's, it, cements those that customer <coughs> segment and that customer segment will be very continual and very uh, consistent in the long run and that's why it's very hard for other competitors to come in and steal your customers because they've already been stabilized yeah so so on that so again this, this is why I have coming back to the customers and the focus on the business clients, right? So if you look at a typical, let's say, 777-300, right? Basically, the number of premier seats is a lot smaller, which is basically the focus for business business uh, 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 people versus the number of economy classes, right? So that is not, not necessarily the focus on business people. So again, you're focusing... So I, I want to know, why are you focusing on business people only whilst the actual capacity in a typical airplane is, is, is smaller if you if you actually compare it to some of the other competitors while your capacity in economy is actually larger <coughs> than the um, two point. The first thing is that uh, as we have mentioned before our operational cost is too high at the moment and uh, even the planes fill out uh, the, 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 the airplanes can only make a uh, break even if they fill out 129 percent of the economy seats that's why that is really hard for the company at the moment to uh, leverage from the economy to get the break evens or even make profit. And secondly, uh, as we have already mentioned, the competition in terms of uh, the economy class is too high at the moment because there are so many uh, cheap, uh, not cheap, but like budget airplanes in the market. And uh, that's why the, it's very, very hard to tackle that part. And additionally, to elaborate on our strategy and from what you said today, uh, we uh, we can open up the line not just exclusively for, for business class. Yeah. We can also uh, add it to the economy line yeah. for smaller businesses or uh, any other uh, businesses that would prefer to use the economy class if they want to cut costs on yeah. uh, travel and expenditure. So we can provide different packages to tackle different segments. My other question regarding your services, because a lot of it, you know, depends on the services given in the airplane and one of the strategies or solutions that you gave was to have customers fill out the feedback form so my question to you is um, how do you motivate the customers to actually fill the survey 
if they're you know if they want to do a long stay or comfort on the plane. So an, an idea from the question you've just posed is that we can actually add that to miles or the points, the reward points. So if we have an in-screen display to get feedback, we can incorporate it into getting them more reward points, uh, which is an incentive for customers to fill out the feedback. And when it's filled out, uh, that's an incentive for um, the, uh, the workers and the flight assistants on the plane to work better, yeah. to provide better services, so that they get bonuses too. Yeah. And also another incentive for that recommendation is uh, because uh, in the case we have, an, uh, we have heard um, issues of the services in the airplanes is not good enough and they just complain it uh, on social media and, and many other pages so if we can do that we can do a real-time reactions uh, thanks to the other services uh, survey that we receive and we can uh, give them some promotion codes or some uh, different kind of but um, uh, I mean budget so that they, we can satisfy them more if we know uh, in case they are having different difficult times in the airplane yeah, um, you mentioned about you know you want to take care about your stakeholders. You know, um, shareholders of you know, the company are the point stakeholders. And you introduced a few numbers, right? You mentioned about the cost of ten million US dollars for you know deploying your differentiation strategy, okay. and then marketing is going to require about six hundred thousand US dollars per city. We multiply it by ten cities. Uh, that's you know, essentially you know somewhere around like 500 million Hong Kong dollars worth of expenditure, and assuming that's recurring, uh, how do you think about cost control? And how 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 do you think about whether or not these expenses are worth spending, and you're going to be able to generate you know more revenue out of that cost? So as we previously mentioned, your company has already Im implemented a lot of cost cutting procedures. However, with those cost uh, cutting procedures, there have um, this a lot of issues arises in terms of positioning and differentiation and that's why we've uh, suggested these strategies and yes there is a cost to this strategy but we believe that uh, the the benefits from it is not the the, the additional cost is outweighed by the cost reduction that your the your strategy your current strategies have in, um, implemented so to add on to the point you made about the six hundred thousand um, 600,000 for one city and we initially only do 10 cities which is 6 million Hong Kong dollars so that will only um, come around below 1 million US dollars so the total budget is around 10 to 15 or below that so this is a very conservative way to market uh, and it's very small in terms of a global marketing strategy so we believe the cost will be justified through our sales of both our um, partnership deals and with our um, overall package and number of seats we fill so um, another point add on to that is that the 10, mi 10 million is uh, going to be applied for three years. So uh, the cost is going to be leveraged two times and uh, it's going to reduce <coughs> the cost that you have to bear. Yeah. So I, I have two, two questions left. Um, uh, so on that position, so all that 600,000 is therefore given the focus on the business uh, class segment. The six hundred thousand is now very focused on the business class and the city, the corporate segment, mm -hmm. or six hundred thousand per city. Yes. Open. So two hundred thousand Hong Kong dollars per year to cover big corporates and small corporates. Because that that strategy primarily leverages from partnerships. Yeah. Um, everything else is additional marketing, but our partnerships is the most important uh, way in which we um, sell the business class package that we recommended in our strategy. And again, as I have mentioned, uh, the point of the positioning strategy is to uh, give out the information and the brand image first through the uh, marketing and it's going to be public information also so that many people want to know about it it's not only focusing pr like on it's not like um, only specifically focusing on businessmen right. but our yeah. primary target is business okay. well, I have one question yeah. left so um, given that we're talking about 124 percent break even point and everything uh, the biggest chunk of cost uh, is, or a big chunk is actually fuel cost do you think given that if I read the, the, the graph correctly 11 out of 15 years actually we they, uh, the derivatives were actually more expensive than buying on the open market right. do you think that we actually should speculate on oil prices instead of hedging as a key strategy for the long term I, I believe that the hedging strategy would be much better in terms of oil prices now they've risen again in terms of uh, like the previous year so it's very volatile and if they speculate on the oil prices it doesn't really pro uh, provide a corporate uh, perception that we want to attach with uh, Cathay Pacific but instead of doing a forward contract we suggest you do an options it's much safer 